So the first two lectures were on the beginnings of microbiology. The third lecture was related to the concepts and changes that took place in the knowledge of prevention, transmission and treatment of diseases. At length, the history of microbiology can be divided into three ages. The classical golden age, the second golden age and the third golden age also known as the modern age. Microbiology blossomed during what is called the classical golden age which lasted for 60 years from 1854 until the advent of World War I in 1914. During this period scientists were in search of answers in the field of microbiology. They had questions such as the one we discussed extensively. Do microbes generate spontaneously? They also wanted to know what is the cause of diseases. How can infection and disease be prevented? These questions open new fields of science such as immunology, epidemiology and chemotherapy. Thirty years later, the 1940s ushered in molecular genetics, the field of biology that studies the structure and function of genes. Biologists were interested in knowing how genes were regulated. It was also the time of mass production of antibiotics. This period lasted from 1943 until 1970 and is known as the second golden age of microbiology. Towards the end of the 20th century, there were several advances in biotechnology. Microorganisms were now being manipulated genetically and used as tiny factories to make human proteins. New microorganisms that were never seen before are being identified such as HIV and SARS viruses. All this is part of the third golden age of microbiology in which we now live. In this modern age, resistance to antibiotics has been a challenging problem to the medical and scientific community. Next, we will look at each of these ages in detail. Now let's focus our attention on the classical golden age of microbiology. During this golden age, several scientists contributed towards the advancement of microbiology. Two of the scientists who contributed significantly towards key concepts were Louis Pasteur who proposed the germ theory and Robert Koch who proved the same and formulated several criteria to establish the germ theory known as postulates. Some scientists contributed to the field of virology which is the study of viruses. Those were Dmitry Ivanovsky, Martinez Bejerink and Sergei Winogradsky. As mentioned in a previous lecture, in 1854 Louis Pasteur became a professor of chemistry in the University of Lille in France. At that time, the general notion about fermentation was that it, it was the chemical breakdown of grape juice. No living organisms were involved and therefore fermentation was considered to have occurred by spontaneous generation. However, Louis Pasteur observed that when he mixed yeast with sugar water, there was growth in the size of yeast cells as well as an increase in the number of yeast cells. Therefore, he concluded that it was the yeast cells that were fermenting the grape juice to produce alcohol. Pasteur also invented a controlled heating technique to overcome wine souring. 
A local problem of wine souring was occurring in France. In fact, an industrialist asked Pasteur if he would know what was causing the problem. Pasteur observed that only soured wines contained bacterial cells. He concluded that the bacteria must have contaminated the yeast cells. The result of that fermentation of the grape juice by the bacteria was the production of acid, which then soured the wine. To solve the problem, Pasteur found out that if he heated the wine below the boiling point, such as at 55 degrees Celsius, it would kill the bacteria and other microorganisms while preserving the wine during the aging process. This controlled heating technique is being used nowadays for milk as well and it's known as pasteurization. Yeasts and bacteria are therefore living factories so to speak where important chemical reactions take place. In 15, 1857, I'm sorry, Louis Pasteur published a short paper where he explained the souring of wine by bacterial cells. What's more, he mentioned that germs such as bacteria might be related to human illnesses. Five years later, after he disproved the theory of spontaneous generation, he formulated the germ theory of disease. This theory states that many diseases are caused by microorganisms. Apart from his contribution for fermentation and pasteurization, Pasteur's lab worked on several diseases and on principles of vaccination. In 1865, a disease known as Pabrini was killing a great number of silkworms. Pasteur worked several years to show that the disease is caused by a microbe that attacked the silkworms in the egg stage. Thus, eliminating the microbe would eliminate the disease. In 1881, he and his co-worker Charles Chamberlain discovered the process of attenuation. Attenuation is the process to either weaken or reduce the number of bacteria. By using several means such as heating, different growth conditions, successive inoculations in animals, and methods of damaging bacterial cells, they sought to weaken the bacteria that causes chicken cholera. They gave this attenuated strain of bacteria to the chicken followed by a lethal dose of the pathogen. The animals did not develop cholera. Attenuation is the basis of the principle behind vaccine development. His lab showed that the anthrax bacilli were filterable, that is, when passed through a filter, only the clear liquid from the broth void of bacteria passed through. That liquid was not able to cause rabies. or anthrax. The anthrax bacilli were therefore trapped in the filter. In 1885 he successfully immunized a young boy against the rabies virus. In 1887 the Pasteur Institute was founded in Paris. A famous quote by Pasteur is the following, chance only favors the mind that is prepared.